Hi, today we are going to present Enterprise Business Systems, uh, the Three Amigos group, which is group number six. Group members of the Three Amigos are Willie Ward III and Andrew Bibbins, and, and myself, Igor Ogizek. So, Enterprise Business Systems, they consist of three segments. Customer, customer relationship management, second segment enterprise resource planning, and the third one supply chain management. So let's I'm going to present about ERP or enterprise resource planning. Uh, it is also called as the business backbone. So uh, first we we would like to introduce some information about ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. Those are systems that serve uh, to integrate and automate many internal business processes and information systems within manufacturing, logistics, distribution, accounting, finance, and even human resource functions of a company. Uh, we prepared one uh, video that explains ERP. This is Tom, the CIO. Although ERP is the backbone of his business, he's always thought that it's complex, expensive, inflexible, and difficult to integrate. He feels that his ERP doesn't provide the real-time visibility needed to proactively respond to changes. It needs to be less complicated, provide a 360 degree view of the business, connect their disparate systems, and allow them to manage change and drive innovation. It's time for Tom to think differently about ERP. Next generation ERP is more operational and delivers an engaging, more personalized user experience. Instead of accessing multiple systems, each with their own navigation, users have access to all the information they need according to their role or job function. Prioritized actions guide them to the urgent tasks of the day, and interactive charts monitor KPIs, giving them actionable information at a glance. No matter how many systems Tom has, he can connect them all, streamlining and automating workflows, breaking down information barriers, and reducing the complexity of his business. An open and lightweight middleware allows Tom to easily access data from his ERP, supply chain, and enterprise asset management systems. As a manufacturer, this provides Tom with greater visibility so he is able to detect, act on, and manage business critical events such as machine failures, missed deliveries from suppliers, and rush orders. With an ERP solution that supports business agility, he is able to drive out costs and drive up growth. And given it was designed specifically for his industry, it's flexible enough to support his specific business processes. A system that works the way Tom's organization works, not the other way around. So now Tom has a different view. It's time to think differently about ERP and about your ERP partner. It's time to think in for ERP. For more information, please visit us at www.thinkyouknowerp.com. Should we really think differently? Well, definitely we need to think differently, but it's not really easy to implement all that stuff, which we're going to see a little bit later. What is actually ERP? Uh, enterprise Resource Planning is a cross-functional enterprise system that serves uh, as a framework, framework to integrate and automate many of the business processes, which will, at the end, accomplish will be accomplished within the manufacturing, logistics, distribution, accounting, as also what I said before, finance and human resource functions of a business. Uh, to better understand ERP, we need to say about uh, its characteristics. 
ERP software is a family of software modules that support the business ac activities involved in virtual back office processes. ERP also gives a company an integrated real-time view of its core business processes as we, said, uh, as we saw from that video. Uh, ERP system also checks business resources and the status of commitments made by the business no matter what department has entered the data into the system. So everything is uh, connected together in one system. And also, uh, ERP system typically consists of integrated modules of manufacturing, distribution, sales, accounting, and human resource applications. Uh, as every system, ent enterprise resource planning has some benefits and challenges. So let's now talk about some of their benefits. Uh, definitely one of the most important benefits is quality and efficiency. ERP creates framework for integrating and, uh, integrating and improving a company's internal business processes that result in significant improvements in the quality and efficiency of customer service, production and distribution. Uh, we also saw what in that video is that ERP is going to decrease costs. Many companies report significant reduction uh, in tra transaction processing costs and hardware, software and IT support staff compared to systems that they had before, which are legacy systems as we learned from our classes. Also, another thing that I really like is decision support. It is implemented also business intelligence and it provides cross-functional information on business performance and we can easily and quickly manage and improve a company's ability to make better decisions in shorter time. So we are gonna improve on that part too. And another really important benefit is enterprise agility. ERP uh, can also be used in breaking down many uh, former department, department, I'm sorry, departmental and functional walls, uh, which will in the end result in more flexible uh, organizational um, and structures, managerial responsibility, and work roles. Uh, on the other hand, we have challenges. Every huge a uh, huge system like this one has many of challenges and one of the most important challenges is high cost and uh, during implementation it's going to be really risky uh, to implement everything. So hardware and software uh, costs a really small part of the total cost and the cost of developing new business processes uh, or even re-engineering them and pre pre preparing employees and educating them is going to be really huge stack of costs. Another really important challenge is to convert convert data from one system to ERP. Usually, everyone is co uh, converting data from legacy systems into new ERP systems. Uh, well, there is so many, it's, it's really important to know uh, causes of ERP failures because uh, companies invest a lot of money and they expect really good results, but there is always space for failures. Uh, business managers and IT professionals underestimate the complexity of planning, development and training that need to prepare for a new ERP system uh, that will radically change their business processes and information systems. Uh, failures involve affected employees in the planning and development phase and change management programs. 
trying to do too much is also really, uh, really kind of tricky part of this uh, implementation because if someone wants to rush it, it's not going to work really good, especially in programming bar. Um, also, uh, is insufficient training is involved here. Uh, companies expect to know everything at the beginning, a few, few lessons, but it's really complex and it doesn't, it, it, it can be good just by doing short trainings. Um, and also failure to do enough, uh, failure to do enough data conversion and testings. But basically everything is based on rushing the process and it's going to uh, affect at the later stages of the implementation. Now let's talk about four major developments and trends that are uh, evolving in ERP applications. So first one is ERP software packages are gradually being modified into more flexible products. Another one is uh, that in relation to the growth of the internet and corporate intranets and extranets prom promo uh, prompt software companies to use internet technologies to build web interfaces and network capabilities into ERP softwares. And third one, but really important one, is the development of inter inter enterprise ERP systems that provide web-enabled links between key business systems of company and its customers, suppliers, distributors, and others, because they are created to make the whole uh, network between all of them, so they can increase even better their profits. And also, uh, ERP software companies, they are trying to develop modular web-enabled software that integrates ERO, customer relationship management, supply chain management, procurement, DSS, enterprise portals, and also many others. Uh, there are five top ERP vendors. I would say the, mo the most, uh, the best, and the, the best in business is SAP. Uh, it has more than 35,000 customers in 120 countries and it's definitely number one ERP market share leader. Uh, another one is Oracle and it has 37,000 ap application customers and also Microsoft is really involved in this business and consists of over 83,000 ERP customers. Infor uh, has over 70,000 customers, and but what is really important about Infor is that it, it is really complex and it's, it has very really discrete manufacturing. And uh, last one, but really important one, is Epicor, in, it has more than 20,000 customers in 140 countries, and which is really unique it works in 30 different languages and also Epicor is really strong ERP consultant. Well, I'm going to talk just about failures because when ERP systems are really good implemented they're just really good benefits. So failures, one of the biggest failure in history is when the UK government tried to implement uh, electronic health record. They involved. Uh, they they started implementation in 2002, and they spent 18,000 uh, 18.7 billion dollars. And at the end of the process, they just decided that it's not good implemented. It. The whole process went down. So they uh, stopped in 2011. They didn't actually need it. That was their conclusion. Well, for $18.7 billion, it's really a bad conclusion. Thank you for watching this. 
if you have any questions, uh, go to our webpage and you can send us an email.